So this book is called Four Days, the historical record of the death of President Kennedy, compiled by United Press International and American Heritage Magazine and the Birmingham Post Herald. On the back of it, it's very foxed, as you can see. On the back of it, um, there's the seal of the President of the United States. This book was uh, issued less than a year after President Kennedy's demise. As you can see, 1964, he was uh, shot in November of 63. American Heritage Magazine was uh, something I remember as a child, which uh, was, its height was in the 50s and 60s, and it uh, also produced lots and lots of books that uh, kind of uh, family-oriented American culture books. So something like this would have been right up their alley. Here's a, a photograph of President Kennedy sitting in his rocking chair. What a lot of people didn't know about President Kennedy is he, um, despite his, his vigorous appearance, he suffered from a lot of maladies. Um, he suffered from Addison's disease, which actually was the reason he looked so tan. Um, he suffered from a back problem that was debilitating. As a matter of fact, it's said that he actually couldn't pass the physical to join the service, but he wanted to so bad that he had somebody rig it. And he suffered a lot uh, while he was in the military. So uh, the introduction is by Bruce Catton. Bruce Catton uh, was at the time the most famous Civil War historian uh, during that time period. Uh, of course, nowadays when you think about Civil War history, you might think of James McPherson or Shelby Foote. But Bruce Catton was the king of Civil War history for that time. And he writes this introduction... What John F. Kennedy left us was most of all an attitude. To put it in the simplest terms, he looked ahead. He knew no more than anyone else what the future was going to be like, but he did know what but he did know that that was where we ought to be looking. Only to a limited extent are we prisoners of the past. The future sets us free. It is our escape hatch. We can shape it to our liking. And we had better start thinking about how we would like it. It was time for us to take that attitude because we thought we were growing old. We had lived through the hard experiences and we were tired. And out of our weariness came caution, suspicion, and the crippling desire to play it safe. We became so worried about what we had to lose that we never began to think about what was still to be gained. And sometimes it looked as if we were becoming a nation of fuddy-duddies. The world was moving faster than ever before, and we were beginning to regret that it was moving at all because we were afraid where it might take us. But President Kennedy personified youth and vigor, and perhaps it was symbolic that both his friends and his foes picked up his Boston accent and began to say vigor. He went about hatless. He liked to mingle with crowds and shake the hands of all the sundry for recreation. He played touch football, and for rest he sat in an old-fashioned rocking chair as if in sly mockery of his own exuberance. He seemed to think that things like music and painting and literature were central parts of American life and that it was worthwhile to know what the musicians and artists and writers were doing. Whatever he did was done with zest as if youth were for the first time touching life and finding it exciting. So in the very beginning, you see this perception of Kennedy as a vigorous youthful touch football playing young man who sits in a rocking chair in a way to almost be ironic but in reality as we've come to know he was actually uh he needed that rocking chair and he was uh, uh nearly crippled from from back pain and the touch football photographs were photo ops to uh set an appearance of youth and vigor and i'm not saying any of this to be critical of him as a matter of fact what you should glean out of that is some admiration for his ability to project an image that was so painful. But it is interesting in 1964 where we stood with uh, this beloved president. In the, this next page, we uh, the entire page is black and it says Friday, 22nd November 1963. Of course, the, the date of the assassination. And it describes the day. That day uh, in Dallas when he... He had landed in Fort Worth um, the day before, and he had spent the night in Fort Worth at the Texas Hotel. 
and um, that morning he got up and it was raining. He delivered a 10 minute speech on top of a truck trailer to uh, just common citizens. And then he uh, had a breakfast uh, speech that was much more formal attended by dignitaries from Fort Worth. So um, this is outside the Texas hotel where he was greeting people. Uh, Jackie hadn't come down yet, so he uh, made his way through the crowd to make uh, a very brief speech to the uh, crowd outside before he walked into the Texas Hotel in Fort Worth. A cheerful morning in Fort Worth, and it was a very cheerful morning. So far, the, the Texas trip had gone really, really well, and his itinerary was to, to have this breakfast speech, then he was going to leave to go to... Uh, the airport. He was going to fly, take a very quick flight to Dallas Love Field, and then from there he was going to drive a slow-moving motorcade for photo opportunities. And then he was going to speak at the uh, uh, the Dallas uh, uh, what was it called? It was like a trade market. Um, and uh, it, it was basically like the Wall Street of Dallas. He was going to make a, a, a luncheon speech there the trademark and uh, then from there he was going to uh, depart Dallas and leave for Austin Texas and stay at the LBJ ranch as you can see um, when he arrived there was some resistance from people uh, some people were were excited to see him and other people were flying uh, resistant flags but it was but at the time it seemed like it was um, a pretty positive reception uh, they were worried about this, too, because um, shortly before this, UN Ambassador Adley Stevenson had um, had been to Dallas, and he was spat on and kicked and shoved by crowds in Dallas. So they were really, really nervous about how things were going to go. So uh, President Kenny gets in his gunmetal gray uh, Lincoln limousine, and he's leaving Love Field here. You can see the flight crew from his plane. Um, Secret Service agent here. That's uh, Governor Connolly of Texas. Uh, his wife would be sitting here. Jackie Kennedy. Some roses that were given to her. And President Kennedy. Uh, when he was at Love Field, he really, really made the press nervous because uh, he had gotten into the car, then he got out of the car, and he went to a chain loop fence and started shaking hands with everybody. The Secret Service were very nervous at that point. So, this is an angle from the uh, the sixth floor window, and this is the sniper's nest. And this is exactly he would have been coming up this way, and he would have they turned left on Elm Street right here, approaching the uh, triple overpass, which is a railroad bridge right here. And this is uh, approximately the point where the assassination occurred. This is um, this is not the Zapruder film. These are uh, this is uh, shots from other films. Um, I think that is Jean Hill, and I think they call this woman the Babushka woman or the Babushka lady. No one's actually sure who she is, but a woman named Beverly Oliver claims to be her. Um, that family uh, was interviewed on TV. Some uh, still shots of the actual shooting. And then, then you can see Secret Service agent Clint Hill gaining onto the back of the limousine. The reason he was running... Is because he was Jackie Kennedy's actual personal Secret Service bodyguard. So he was running to protect her and the president. Here's the flash from Dallas. Um, and if you, uh, if you go, if you're interested, if you're curious, uh, Google on YouTube or, or go onto YouTube and look for um, JFK assassination live radio coverage. And you can hear these flashes delivered in between music and other radio activity. So you can listen to the stations. One of them is uh, oh, uh, KLIF. That's a, one of the most popular ones because it is just a punch-by-punch real-time recording of everything. And the flash 
uh, Dallas, November 22nd. Three shots were fired at President Kenny's motorcade today in downtown Dallas. That's all they knew at first. And correction. And then it says urgent. First shot, first ad shots, Dallas, downtown Dallas. No casualties reported. The incident occurred near the county sheriff's office on Main Street, just east of an underpass leaving towards the trademark where the president was to MA, and then it cuts off there. Then it says, Flash Kennedy seriously wounded, perhaps seriously, perhaps fatally by assassin's bullet. If you listen to some of the uh, radio broadcasts, just to give you a, a taste of the time period, uh, many of the Reporters hesitated to say fatally and hesitated to uh, apply sort of panic-inducing uh, verbiage, which is very different than how the news is today. And then as we continue with the flashes as they get more severe. Another shot of the car. Another interesting thing that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, in the back seat of the car, there was uh, Jack Kennedy, Jackie, and they had roses, and they also had a, a Lamb Chops puppet, which was, um, Lamb Chops was a puppet show, um, the, uh, and a Sherry something did the uh, puppeteering, and it was a gift to them when they landed. A lot of people thought they had a dog in the car with them, but it was actually the puppet Lamb Chops. There's the... Um, Parkland Memorial Hospital entrance where they arrived. Two women grieve outside the hospital in Dallas. Texas Center, Yarf, Ralph Yarborough. It's hard to even imagine what this mood was like. This was a different time in America. This was a time when we had gotten out of World War II and we went through a, a decade of um, uh, the 50s, which was, um, it, it was a reaction to World War II. It was a, it was a very safe decade in terms of, uh, well, for some people, not everybody. It was actually that some of the attitudes were pretty rough on a lot of other people in the country. But, but for the, um, the suburban culture had set in and it was a very safe kind of a sterile decade so things like this were just jarring there's the sixth floor window another view of the sniper's nest uh they're finding evidence that oswald had left uh like a bag with a chicken dinner a coke bottle the manlicker carcano italian world war ii boat action rifle this is the uh the Texas theater where Oswald ran to to hide. This is J.D. Tippett, the police officer who Oswald was accused of shooting. His nickname on the force was JFK because he resembled John F. Kennedy so much. And you can see there is a strong resemblance between John F. Kennedy and J.D. Tippett. It's a press picture of Oswald. Here's eyewitness accounts. Here is the swearing in ceremony of Lyndon Johnson. Jackie looks just mortified right here. Lady Bird Johnson. The very first time a, 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 a U.S. president was sworn in by a woman. Uh, when they landed at the airport in Washington, uh, Bobby Kennedy received Jackie. She's still wearing the same dress. What? Where's that dress today? Well, Jackie took it off at the end of the day and put it in a box. The box was sealed and it has not been opened since. A new president speaks to the nation. Um, just a little segment from his speech. This is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. 
I ask for your help and God's. Now we um, we see the coffin draped with an American flag being moved by an honor guard. Now the 23rd. Country's waking up to just the awful reality of what had happened the day before. And um, just to put it in perspective, you know, this is close to Thanksgiving. So people were already buying turkeys. They were planning dinners. They were in a, a festive mood. Um, this just darkened everything. The viewing, the coffin lies in state, in the capital rotunda. No, I think it was the White House. There was a, uh, a representative of each branch of the armed forces, a sailor from the Navy, a soldier from the Army. Uh, there would be an airman and there would be a Marine. The words of the 79-year-old Irish poet Sean O'Casey in a letter to a friend in New York above were typical of the response from abroad. What a terrible thing has happened to us all, he said. At right, Britain's Prime Minister Sir Alec Douglas Holm kneels in prayer at Westminster Cathedral. Conrad Adenor above opposite and Nikita Khrushchev below opposite signed books in Bonn and Moscow. It was with deep personal grief, Mr. Khrushchev wrote to Mrs. Kennedy, that I learned about the tragic death of your husband. And um, uh, Ireland was particularly um, saddened by this because Kennedy was an Irishman. I mean, he was American born, but he was Irish descended. And um, Ireland felt a lot of pride knowing that President Kennedy was from Ireland. And we see pictures from abroad. Uh, John F. Kennedy Plaza. Um, they renamed it there. You know, it's funny. I was in Ravinia, Italy uh, a couple years ago, and I we sat down to take a break, and we looked, and we saw that we were in John F. Kennedy uh, Square in, in that in that town, which I thought was just funny because we were so far away from everything. Ravinia is a, a Byzantine uh, kind of city. It's full of Byzantine artwork. It's, it's, a, it's a good little ways from Venice, and uh, it's just funny to see that. So far away from your home. Berlin, of course, was particularly moved. Kennedy had famously gone to Berlin and made his famous uh, I'm a Berliner speech. Tokyo. Nairobi. Seoul. London. London obviously grieved. Kennedy's father was the U.S. ambassador to England. President Johnson looking very uh, somber is the word. The proclamation from the White House um, by Lyndon Johnson honoring President Kennedy. Chief Justice Earl Warren, who would, uh, coincidentally, would uh, head the Warren Commission. I think at this point he'd already been selected. I believe uh, Johnson made the announcement in 1963. This is not Kennedy's rocking chair. This is uh, Johnson's rocking chair being brought into the Oval Office. I doubt very seriously there would have been a photograph taken 
a President Kennedy's rocking chair like that at that time. That would have been very, very tacky. Captain Will Fritz of the Dallas Police. He said the case was cinched, that they, uh, um, they weren't concerned at all about getting the conviction. They're holding up the, the rifle for the press to see. There's the ad where uh, the the twelve dollar and seventy eight cent rifle was purchased. Six point five caliber Italian carbine. You can uh, a man like Carcano still uh, essentially goes for that price adjusted for inflation today. Uh, it, it can easily still it can easily be found along with Mosin Nagants and other World War Two era or, or even World War One era rifles. There was so such a surplus of them. Uh, you can pick one up for around a hundred dollars. Still, it's not an expensive rifle. November twenty fourth, Sunday. John Kennedy Jr. and Caroline Kennedy. Now it's in the rotunda line in state. The song Sweet Caroline was actually uh, written about Caroline Kennedy. The Kennedy family, Jackie, Bobby, Um, I don't see Edward here in this picture. I think he might be uh, trailing, but I don't. That if that is him, I, it, it, it's harder. That might be him, but I don't recognize him. That looks like an older man. I guess that is him. It just doesn't look like him from that angle. At this point, another act of violence occurs when uh, Oswald is taken from, he's in the, the police and they're taking him to the parking garage below from an elevator. And you can see frame by frame of him. And then he's approached by Jack Ruby, who guns him down in front of everybody in the parking garage, in front of all those cops. Gut shot, and notice how he's holding the gun. He has his pinky, his next finger, and then his middle finger is holding the trigger. His index finger is over the gun, and his thumb is around it. That's a, a, a mafia style for executions, so the gun will be nearly impossible to pry out of the hand. It's not well known. This is the carousel club where that Jack Ruby owned. Close up of Jack Ruby. Jacob Rubenstein. And uh of Jackie the 25th and the coffin is being carried to the to the grave yeah that's Ted Kennedy that looks more like him in that picture
See how the boots are in the, the horse stirrups backwards? These are foreign dignitaries. Requiem in St. Matthew's Cathedral. The very famous uh, picture of John Kennedy Jr. A lot there's there was also there was three deaths that happened during this time period and very little attention was given to JD Tippett's death, who also was buried around the same time period. Um should have they should have put something more on this book, I think, to acknowledge that as well. Considering he was killed in the line of duty while searching for the the uh, assassin, this is the undelivered speech. Um, interestingly, it, it's also um, it's in, engraved at the uh, site of the assassination in Dallas, and I was there one night, and um, a man came out of the shadows in front of me and said, "Did you read the unfinished speech?" And I said, "No." He said, "You need to read it before you leave," and it was just a weird exchange, but. This is the speech he would have delivered at the uh, text at the Dallas trademark. It's printed on different paper, which is interesting. And this is just comments. From different papers and different people at the time period and like I said this book was less than a year after it so this was a kind of a package that was trying to bottle up the sentiment and the mood of the nation into one book a selection of personal statements In the order of the funeral. List of foreign dignitaries who attended the funeral. Charles de Gaulle. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, that the husband of Queen Elizabeth. The funeral eulogy and the prayer at the grave. And then, so this is the, the keepsake book. So I, I found this in a thrift store. Decided to give it a home to add to my Kennedy collection. So, um, just a, a keepsake. 50, what is it? Goodness gracious. Uh, is it 57 years already? Uh... I think so. Um, so, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit more downbeat than my usual. So, until next time, bye.